Hi, my name is Richard Schaffer. I'm a radiation oncologist, which means that I treat patients with cancer with radiotherapy, but I'm particularly specialised now in treating patients with non-cancer conditions or benign conditions with radiotherapy. So radiotherapy um, is used in various benign conditions quite effectively. Um, radiotherapy acts in two separate ways. First of all, radiation is an anti-proliferative uh, uh, treatment. In other words, it stops stuff growing. So we use it in very high doses to treat people with cancer. We use sort of intermediate doses for non-cancer conditions which are growing. Um, and that would include hyperproliferative conditions such as Dupuytren's disease, Lederhose disease, and also um, keloid scarring. So that's the first way that it works. The second way that it works is an, as an anti-inflammatory treatment. So there are various degenerative conditions, including arthritis, osteoarthritis as various joints, um, enthesopathy, so in other words, um, inflammation of the insertion of tendons and ligaments into joints, uh, such as heel pain, and also tendinopathies, so problems with tendons, such as in the elbow or the shoulder. And, and there, as I say, it works as an anti-inflammatory. We use very, very low doses of radiation uh, as an anti-inflammatory treatment. In terms of the effectiveness, that really depends what part of the body and what sort of condition you're treating. So, for instance, uh, talking about uh, radiotherapy for Dupuytren's disease, there was a trial in Germany looking at uh, radiotherapy and what happened eight years after treatment. For those who had no treatment, uh, for patients with early progressive Dupuytren's disease, 62% of people found their disease got worse, and that was reduced to 20% of people with radiotherapy. In terms of those who actually needed surgery for, for a significant contracture, um, radiotherapy reduced the chance of needing surgery from 30% to 8%. If we look at heel pain, for example, so heel pain including plantar fasciitis and Achilles tendonitis, so radiotherapy is about 85% effective at reducing pain. Now we give the radiotherapy over two to three weeks, that's six treatments. And if we assess it immediately after treatment, then there's a certain amount of pain relief, but actually the pain relief increases over time. Sometimes if patients get inadequate pain relief at three months, then we might give a second series of radiotherapy. And that's really where we get the 85% response rate from. So a typical radiotherapy treatment does depend on what sort of treatment you're having. Um, and so, for instance, if I'm treating someone for Dupuytren's or Lederhose disease, plantar fibromatosis, then the treatment is extremely simple. So I would see the patient in clinic, obviously talk about the treatment, consent the patient, examine the patient. And the first thing I would then do is mark out the disease on the patient's hand or foot, literally with a felt tip pen. And so I would literally draw around the nodules, the cords, tell them where the disease is, I add on an appropriate margin so that I don't miss anything. Um, and then I send the patient to the radiographer who will take a photo, they'll then make um, a tracing, and that makes a shape template so that we treat the right bit each day. Normally the treatment would start roughly a couple of weeks after the markup appointment. When the treatment starts, the patient will have their hand in a certain position, the, treatment will, uh, the, the machine will move around them, and the invisible radiation will be given out by the machine. The treatment takes approximately 10 minutes each day per bit. So in other words, if you're having one hand, 10 minutes, if you're having two hands, perhaps 15 or 20 minutes. Um, the treatment is painless, it's just like having a scan really, it's invisible radiation. Um, for a hand or foot, we would tend to use five treatments in a row, so Monday to Friday, so that's one week of treatment. There would then be a gap of around three months and then a further five days of treatment. So two weeks with three months in between. Um, and that would be the treatment course. Now, if we move on to heel pain, so plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis and arthritis type issues, then actually the treatment is given as a, a much lower dose. So remember it's three to six gray dose, which is very, very tiny. But in fact, it's given in a slightly different way. So again, I would see the patient, I would consent the patient um, and tell them about the treatment, that sort of thing. 
The next stage would be a CT scan. Now this CT scan is not done really to look for anything new, to look for signs or anything like that. It's really done in order that we can design the treatment. It's called a CT planning scan. Once that planning scan's done, then I would look at that scan. I would outline the areas using the CT, telling uh, the staff exactly what we're going to do. And then again, the treatment would normally start a couple of weeks after that CT planning scan. And again, the patient will be on a hard couch, machine would move around to various bits. Again, the treatment takes around 10 minutes per day. It's entirely painless. Um, for the low dose treatments, there'll be six treatments. And I would tend to do it either twice a week, so let's say Monday and Thursday each week, or three times a week, that'll be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, over two weeks. So in line with all other treatments, radiotherapy does have some risks involved. Um, and the risks are associated with two things. First of all, the area that you're treating. So in other words, it would be very different if you're treating someone's hand or foot or if you're treating elsewhere in the body. Um, and also the dose that we use. So um, for Dupuytrons and Lederhose disease, plantar fibromatosis, we use a sort of intermediate dose. And in terms of what the patient experiences during the treatment, really is like having a scan. I wouldn't expect them to have any side effects. Um, but about two or three weeks after each week of treatment, they may all get some redness and soreness of the skin, a bit like mild sunburn. Sometimes it goes, it goes a little bit dry. And if that happens, you just put some moisturizer on. For most people, eventually that dryness will go, but about 20% of people have ongoing dryness in the long term. And that really is the main side effect of radiotherapy. However, sometimes people say that the skin itself can become a little bit rougher, thicker, thinner, smoother, There's sort of minor changes like that. Occasionally people say that it can go a bit paler with some blood vessels growing over it as well. Very occasionally people say that they have a little bit of a change in tenderness, um, or a burning sensation, that sort of thing. So really very minor changes, but as I say, there are changes for the long term. Now, I always tell people not to do things like manual labor, using chemicals, um, you know, extremes of heat and cold, and that's because the skin will be susceptible during that time, particularly for the three or four weeks after each uh, week of treatment, and therefore you will need to avoid doing certain things. So for instance, if you're a builder, um, you know, make sure you protect your hands, wear gel uh, gloves or anti-vibration gloves. Um, if you do weightlifting, for example, then again, you need to be very careful what you do. Um, for some people, it's okay to modify the way you do things. Some people just leave, need to leave off doing those things during that time. And the issue is because your skin is susceptible, that rather than just getting some redness and soreness, you may well get some blistering. Um, and uh, so that's certainly a side effect. I've seen it in fewer than 1% of my patients. The last thing that's really important is that uh, radiation, as well as being used in very high doses to treat people with cancer, radiation also has a very, very small risk of causing cancer, a type of skin cancer in the area that we treat. So in other words, if I'm treating the skin of the hand, then of course that risk would just be of the hand. Now, the reason why I say skin cancer is because really there's not much else there that's a cancer bearing region. So for instance, if I treated the lungs or the head, you know, then people do get cancer of the lungs and that sort of thing. Radiation, if you treat someone's hands, doesn't give you a risk of lung cancer, for example, but it does give a risk of um, a, a cancer in the hands. Um, in the main, that's a type of cancer called a basal cell carcinoma. Now that's a cancer again in the main that doesn't spread outside of that area and we it would be dealt with with surgery. There is one case report in the literature of a child that was treated with radiotherapy, and that's something we would never do. Um, but he got a type of cancer that did spread. So it's important to know that that exists. But given that we're treating people who in the main are much older than that, then really it's difficult to know whether that applies at all. Now, the last thing to say about the risk of cancer is that the older you get, the fewer years you have to actually form a cancer. And because the risk of getting a basal cell carcinoma on average takes roughly 20 or 30 years from the time of radiation, then for someone, let's say, who's 70 years old, the risk of getting a cancer in your lifetime is very, very low. But for a 50 year old, I would normally quote a one in a thousand lifetime risk. Of course, if you're younger than that, then that risk may well be uh, higher. And that's something really that needs to be discussed in quite a lot of detail with your clinician. The last thing to say is that for the very low dose radiotherapy uh, that we talked about, so where we give three to six gray, for instance, for people with heel pain or with arthritis, 
all the risks I've talk, talked about with redness and soreness of the skin, dryness, all that sort of thing, really there's no risk. I've not seen redness and soreness of the skin. There is a very small risk that you might get an increase in pain for a week after the treatment, but that is temporary.